Caitlin and I am doing another statue review. So a lot of you guys said that uh, you wouldn't mind seeing some just some random statue reviews that I haven't uh, shown off, you know, in their full glory uh, on my channel. So I wanted to start with this one. This is one of my favorites uh, in my collection, honestly. Uh, I used to say that this was my favorite Wonder Woman statue um, until I got the Linda Carter tweeter hit, which I did do a review on that one. Um, and, uh, yeah. Now, now, it, I still think I like Linda better, but this is still really damn cool. Just because I remember <laughs> all the crap that went on around this particular style Wonder Woman. So, this is Diana. Uh, so, I think it was, like, in 2008 when this started. Um, Wonder Woman was approaching her 600th issue. Uh, and DC kind of already knew that in 2011 they wanted to do um, the New 52. Basically they took all their existing comic covers or, or comic stories rather, all their comic books and they said okay in 2011 we're revamping everything, we're resetting the universe, we're starting from the beginning. Uh, which they've done, you know, a couple times throughout the years. Uh, and so, I, I'm pretty sure the people behind Wonder Woman was like, you know what? Everything's gonna change in a few years anyway. Let's just go crazy. Let's just do whatever the shit we want with Wonder Woman. I mean, this is our chance. It's not gonna last that long. I think it lasted about 18 issues. Um, yeah, it, it was put into production in 2008. I said 2008 was, like, when it was started. No, I think the idea started in 2008. Um, but it lasted about 18 issues, I want to say. Maybe 20. I can't remember. Um, but not that many. Over a year, but not that many. Um, let's, let's just go crazy. So, they started out with just putting the concept art out there for everyone to see. And, uh, this was the concept art. Leather jacket. Uh, you know, different, slightly different tiara, different bracelets, the corset, the leather pants. The leather pants... Putting Wonder Woman in pants, it's almost like they started World War III, you would have thought from the news coverage that this got. It was on the world news, it was on my local news channels, it was everywhere on the internet. It was incredible how many people were talking that Wonder Woman was now wearing pants. It, you would have, I mean, it was like DC just made the ultimate sin or something like that. I remember an interview, uh, there was a YouTube channel that I was watching at the time, I don't think they're active anymore. Um, but they went to a con and interviewed just random people, like, should Wonder Woman wear pants? And everyone was like, no. <laughs> there wasn't a single yes in the entire interview. Um, so a lot of people were really hating Wonder Woman 600, even before it came out. Um, but it fit. And I was one of them. I, I hated the pants until I read the comics and then it makes sense. Diana's way more hardcore. She's a bit heavy metal in this uh she really she actually really loves heavy metal music. It shows her at a club listening to it. Um and there's just so many different elements in this. The Oracle is like you've never seen her before. Like an Oracle like she's like a street she's like a homeless kid li living in like a tunnel. Uh that uh, has a very big addiction to gum. <laughs> We find the story about why she's not on the mascara anymore and uh, who's actually been raising her. She doesn't even know exactly who's been raising her since she was a child. She le left the mascara uh, as a child. Um, and she knows these people in these cloaks have been raising her, but they don't know who... She doesn't even know who these people are uh, until about midway to near the end of the series. And she finds out what's happened to the mascara and how to save it, how to save her home, how to save her mom. Uh, and all that, and there's also a talking cat in here, so, yeah, it gave me Sabrina Blue Teenage Witch vibes, too, so I like that part also, uh, but it's, st even with all the personality changes, again, she's a bit more hardcore, she's a bit more rough around the edges, but there's still a part of the story that shows that she's still Diana, she's still the Wonder Woman with the incredible, loving, uh, heart. I don't know where all the styrofoam came from, I honestly, it's, Lit covering my table and I have no idea working. But, uh, she still has that same loving heart that Diana's always had in her comic books. 
um, so it's really amazing. Also, you can't tell really here, but uh, the little things on her boots, it's actually supposed to be star-shaped spurs. It's really freaking cool. So the lasso is just made of really loose, uh, cheap wire. Uh, I, this, this is the worst thing. I hate the worst about this. Honestly, they, they didn't even use like stiff wire. Uh, cause you can see I'm like moving it around a little bit. Uh, and I don't really like that. It hooks into this little column here so it doesn't like come completely out. And then obviously the other part hooks into the statue itself. Um, but yeah, and another thing about it, and, and I noticed this with some other people too saying this about the statue as well. The look in the eyes where she's looking straight up. Like you can tell she's she's looking at someone like much bigger than her, like an enemy that's much bigger than her, but still has a look in her face that's like, I'm so gonna screw you over. But it it looks a little weird out of context. I think if they were to put the eyes like dead center instead of looking up, it would have looked uh, a little bit better, you know, just made her look dead center and then maybe squint a little bit more uh, than she is now. Would have been really cool. Uh, the belt, the engraving on the belt is amazing, but you can see here on the jacket, right here, there's like different shades of like blue for the leather jacket. I really wish they had used different shades of gold for the belt just to highlight it because a lot of this etching and sculpting gets kind of lost in just this solid color and it's the same color as her lasso too, so I don't really like that, but other than that, the hair flow the base with the columns it still shows like you know the mascara kind of stuff and if you look I don't know if I can get it close enough here but um this column I had to make sure that was it this particular end of the column if you look close enough this is my favorite part I'm gonna try you can see an Amazon standing it was probably like the entrance to one of their temples or something you can see another column falling there uh, etched into it, but yeah, it looks like, or no, I guess it's more like supposed to be outside, like, uh, in the arena. Like, you, you can just see several different, like, buildings around her. Uh, and I don't know if it's supposed to be Diana. I'm saying it's supposed to be Apolita. But yeah, that's, that's a little Easter egg that you wouldn't know just by keeping this in box or just, you know, glancing at it. Uh, and I really love, you don't really see super miniature, like, sculptures pretty much carvings in a Wonder Woman base and or any base not just Wonder Woman any base and that is really cool you can see some more on I, for, I actually forgot about this side <laughs> I knew there was one I can't remember but yeah it's not as cool but you can see this, this was probably supposed to be like statues to the gods maybe lining a hallway I don't know but that is really freaking cool again you don't see that that much detail in a statue's base anymore and this is solid she doesn't connect or she doesn't uh, come off of her base but um, this is made of resin so it is pretty heavy pretty heavy duty and I absolutely love this if you guys don't want to read the 600 uh, story art uh, try to get your hands at least and read the uh, 600th issue itself because it starts out with a whole bunch of like mini uh, stories that kind of wraps up Diana through the years like takes her back to all these different people that's been in Diana's life uh, through all of volume 3 pretty much of Wonder Woman and kind of wraps up the story in a bit of in a really cool way uh, and also there's a letter printed in that book by Linda Carter talking about Wonder Woman and I think she does the most amazing job at explaining not just Wonder Woman as her character, but Wonder Woman as the character itself uh, throughout the years. And it's it's honestly incredible. So, I would recommend the comic. I would definitely recommend the statue because it's so freaking cool. Uh, and, again, I, I just remember the history behind it about everyone blowing up over the statue. Or over this look, rather, for Wonder Woman. It was crazy. <laughs> It, you know, people who hadn't even thought of Wonder Woman, people who aren't comic book geeks whatsoever, uh, or, you know, any, like, superhero nerds at that time whatsoever, they knew who Wonder Woman was, they knew what Wonder Woman looked like, and the idea of Wonder Woman wearing pants was unthinkable. She wore shorts in the early beginning. Sorry, I've been doing a lot of videos today, and there's a lot of dust in here. But, 
she wore shorts at the beginning, but it was still very close to her original, like, skirt or bikini-style outfit. Uh, so yeah, this was a completely, like, 180, and everyone hated it. Until they read the comics. If you read the comics, you understood. And, uh, it was pretty cool. So, I absolutely love this statue. Let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, yeah, it's really freaking cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, like always, it's a community, not a competition. I'll see y'all later. Bye.